Oh, let will have a mind. Um, oh, wow. I did it again, you know. What was that? Forgot to queue up the next track. Oh, dear. Well, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> I've got things to ask, JT. Go on, then. Ask me a question. I appreciate it. Yeah. I've, I've found um, a, a video on YouTube yeah. from Exeter University Business School yeah. about digital transformation of local authorities. Okay, I'll, can I just explain what that is? Oh, well. Because there would be a lot of people who don't know. No, exactly. Including me. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, or the public sector. Mm -hmm. But that would include um, universities within that. Mm -hmm. The industries that are most siloed really, really struggle. So if we think about the structure of our public services, we've got 430 councils, each surrounded by health, social care, police, ambulance, third sector and housing. At the front end, they do myriad things, but at the back end, they all do pretty much versions of the same thing, right? They make and receive payments, they check your identity, they do licensing, they do registration, they do HR and processing and case management and again and again and again. And they don't even do them, right? Their supplier communities do it, salami slicing, flogging them, different versions of the same thing. Same with our 650 NHS trusts, of course. Same with our 43 police forces. Dare I say 130-something universities. We yeah. could go on 1,500 social housing providers, all of whom have this terrible baggage of this historical inertia generated by all of these pretty redundant processes, it's got to be said. So, you know, if you were an alien now, you'd look upon the way that we run our public services, where the things that citizens care about, doctors, teachers, nurses, daycare centres, social workers, roads, parks, libraries, are being cut, cut, cut to the bone, and some councils are going out of business. We are now having a national discussion, of course, about our 55 billion deficit, and we're finding now that the NHS appears to be on the brink of collapse and yet here's one searing question for you toby let's take health imagine that we could quantify put a number on the uh well what that's what they're saying is that given what's available yeah on the cloud mm -hmm. with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and all the systems mm -hmm. there's a lot of duplication going on oh yes yes so the systems within local authorities that mm. down the road there's another local authority with something very similar mm. and then there's a hospital mm. with patient information which mm -hmm. is much the same as the social services right. somewhere else sh could know about if only the information systems were um integrated right okay so you, you want you want all this armed out to be one thing instead of no oh, this is this is i mean he was making a lot of sense to mm. me until he said um for example heart heart radio what a fantastic thing heart radio is mm. By regional radio stations, Hard FM, Exeter, Hard FM, London, Hard FM, Hertfordshire, whatever. And if you're listening to Hard FM in one of those regional stations, you get local weather, local DJs, local advertising, local traffic, local gossip, local stuff for local people. Brilliant. Except, of course, Heart FM isn't daft enough to also run 45 local back-end offices with each of their finance systems and recruitment and CRMs, and you get the picture, right? It's all centralised in some tin shed in... Who cares? I don't care as a listener to Heart FM. And yet Heart FM is able to deliver to me local services tailored to my local needs. Now, that's a simplified solution, but the idea is... Where there is no public value in differentiation and producing different stuff, in other words, is it really important that my local hospital in Exeter has a different customer relationship management system or patient administration system than one in Leeds? Of course it's not. Patients don't care about that. So because they've centralised everything, their the local studios are very, very small. Mm. Most of their programme comes from somewhere else. Bristol. Bristol. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> about heart there's show about Exeter comes from Bristol the whole show comes from Bristol I think so well, well this is what's going to happen with this fine radio station no. as well what? we're think, going to be broadcasting from, from here Bristol? and it will be down in Plymouth it'll be anywhere 
you can pick it up now anywhere. Oh, yeah, but that's a different thing. But that's Is it? D- okay. That's DAB. Yes. I mean, that, because... Are you, you're talking about the actual... The I radio think, station <laughs> being... Well, uh, I think that's I think that's what he's saying. Right. But he may... I mean, it may be that heart is slightly different. Mm-hmm. Chris is assuming that the Exeter heart signal is coming from Bristol. Well, it well, could I be don't anywhere. know whether that's true or it's not. It's like years ago, you got radio stations which came from abroad. Yeah. And it, they sounded like they came to, from just down the road. No, radio <laughs> Luxembourg sounded terrible. <laughs> it was very hard to listen to. Well, it depends on which, how, how, who's winding them up. Well, yes, OK. <laughs> how it, was, it was essential to listen to it. I'm not saying it wasn't a good no, radio no, but station. It, I'm just saying. Any radio station you can listen to anywhere you like in the world now. You could take this fine radio station yes. and listen to it in Timbuktu. Right. And um, uh, it make no difference that you are not in this fine city listening to the station. So that's the listening point of view. Yes, that's the listening. And as you say, Phonic FM is on DAB in, yes. in Torquay and in yes. Plymouth. So if, if, you, and, if, and if the radio station only wanted to be in here, in Exeter, yes. then they shouldn't have gone DAB because that oh, takes it no. further. But no. what about... Chris... <laughs> um, well, a, they should have gone DAB because means there's a wider listenership. Yes, so people in Plymouth yeah. can, can, can get a better idea of what's going on mm. in Exeter and yeah, they we'll actually find out a bit more about Plymouth. Well, I think moment. it's keeping up with the Joneses, as they can say. You know, you've got everybody's doing that and yes. you, you have to upgrade up the stakes a bit. Well, the other thing is is the the input then, because mm. what you might be suggesting is that we we have one instead of having a playout system and a, an interwebby com- <laughs> computer that may or may not be working. So, <laughs> you see, Chris, at this moment, let's just talk about reality, the specifics of this show here Chris. and now. Chris mm. has got his phone connected by Bluetooth yep. into the desk. Yes. So the question is, what else can we get into Chris's phone? Well, we can plug Chris into the Bluetooth, into the fa- into the desk, and then whatever he says, he doesn't have to be right next to the microphone. <laughs> he could be oh. somewhere else. He you could do- buy Bluetooth. So the fi- the microphone on the on his phone is good enough, you reckon? I'm definitely <laughs> here and hearing <laughs> Anne Marie with unhealthy. 